Hi there, this is John. Welcome to the Wine Scrolls. Glad you joined me today. This podcast is sort of all new to me, but um, hey, I want to share my wine experiences and tasting and all that fun stuff with you. Uh, subscribe below and I look forward to um, our future podcasts. Probably every 10 days or so I plan to do this. Um, but I want to just go through some of the wine tasting experiences in my life and, and, um, and also, uh, you know, we're going to go through one wine today, a variety called Karen Young. This is a uh, Martin Ranch Karen Young 2016. And uh, Karen Young typically is a, it's a Spanish origin grape that uh, really is used for blending in Europe a lot, but um, they made 100% out here. And uh, I'm based in California, so this is out of Gilroy, California, Santa Cruz Mountain AVA. And um, I'll tell you, we'll go through this in a second. A little bit about myself. I've been drinking wine for about 25 years plus. I started getting into it in my mid mid twenties and I started doing a lot of wine courses. I did um, French wine courses and Spanish wine courses, you know, either a couple day courses or some of them were four weeks and so forth. I'm not in the industry. I'm in high tech, but I started getting sort of balanced and did a lot of the courses and um, what intrigued me more about it was just how complex everything was. There's millions of wineries. There's, you know, up to 10,000 varietals. You hear 5,000, 10,000, you know, it's sort of a mystery, but I think there's probably 10,000 out there, who knows? And um, wine the industry in general, you have, you know, European winemakers coming out to the United States to help the United States make wine. You have US winemakers going out to Europe because some of the Europeans desire like Napa Valley wines. Uh, so they're helping them sort of create a little bit of that uh, influence out there also. So it's just back and forth. So you have these, you have the old world wines and the new world wines, old world sort of Europe wines. You have the new world US and South America and Australia, and they're sort of getting closer and combining a little bit, right? And so sometimes you grab a new world wine and it tastes like an old world wine and vice versa. So, but here we're, we're here to talk about that, uh, a Carignan. Um, one thing, as I started going through all the wine classes and then I did the sommelier courses uh, in my late 30s and early 40s, the sommelier courses that really, uh, really sort of was the final staple with me going, hey, you know what, um, uh, I love this stuff. Uh, uh, the master sommeliers and sort of, they know a little bit about everything and you got, you know, the certified sommeliers and advanced sommeliers and wine experts and so forth. The whole thing was just really intriguing to me as I went through all the courses. And then some of the people that know wines more than a lot of sommeliers are bartenders, bartenders around this every day. And when I was taking the courses, the bartenders actually did quite well um, because they had a really good palate and they sort of understood wines from end to end because they've been serving um, for years. And so, so it was really, really, really uh, um, a great experience. I highly suggest you get a chance if you have time to go through that whole course. So we're, before we get to this, since I'm not in the industry, there's a couple things I do. One is um, I, I read Wine Spectre magazine. Um, I'm not promoting these magazines. I'm not here to, I'm not getting paid, but um, this is, the, I've been a subscriber for probably seven years. Awesome magazine. Gives you an idea of what's going on worldwide as far as winemakers in Spain and Argentina and wherever else all the complications they're having, um, what, what influences them, climate change, how they're adapting to climate change, how they're, you know, these extra days of summer they're getting or the extra heat, extra rain, how they're sort of adapting to that. And then one thing, one other book that I read um, on occasion is Wine Folly. Uh, definitely more, a heavy illustration book with uh, lots of good text in it too, but, and good content. But um, not being in the industry, this, this, Probably once a year, I'll sort of go through this book and read it, and it keeps me fresh. It gives you an idea of all, you know, get, gets you fresh in all of rivals again, where they're from, um, uh, labeling, uh, you know, hints again on you know, tasting. Um, and uh, so I, I like the book. It's very, very easy to read. And if you're a beginner, it's a great book to go ahead and go through from end to end. But once a year, I'll go ahead and open it up and just read it from end to end, and it keeps me fresh on this. Uh, but the best way to stay fresh, of course, in wine is to keep, is drink wine, right? So again, this is a 2016 Carignan from Martin Ranch 
Gilroy, California, Santa Cruz Mountain ABA, and this is around 35 bucks a bottle. And I'm just gonna go through a little techniques. When you pour a wine, um, you know, I have a little bit already poured in here, but I'll pour a little more. Uh, aerate it a little bit, you want it to open up a little bit. And um, so, you know, a nice glass like this, oh, aerates the wine nicely. And what I typically do is grab just a piece of paper or a piece of white cloth and you can just see, you know, beautiful ruby red color. Carignan, like I mentioned, is typically a, bet, a blending grape. So in, in the scale of body, let's say Cabernet being like one of the heavier ones, it's sort of in between a little bit. Um, you know, Pinot Noir sort of on the left, Cab, Cab sort of on, a little bit on the right, and Carignan sort of in between. So acidity levels, tannin levels are sort of uh, lower end and bodies a little bit lower end, but they made 100% and this is actually they made it really good and, and I, I got a case of this that you know, I wanted to share uh, uh, My experience with Karen Young um, When I bring it out of parties, everybody's like, oh, Karen Young, you know, it's, isn't that more of a blending rate? But this one they made it real well. So, you know, take a look at and you know filtered Ruby red nice. It's a little bit brown on the edges that represents sort of the seven years of age on this and um, and I think I mentioned 13% alcohol in this. So I just swish it a little bit. Take that smell, and the smell is really nice. Raspberry and strawberry, you know, the, the typical red fruits. You know, actually a little bit of, tiny bit of tobacco. And um, you smell a tiny bit of oak in there too. But very nice smell. So let's taste it. So tannins, tannins and acidity, as I expect, sort of neutral. This is seven years old too, so, um, but nice fruit. And then the alcohol sort of, sort of evaporates very quickly, but it actually has a nice finish. This is a dangerous wine. And the reason why it's dangerous is because this is the one that you can put out with friends and this will be gone in like seven minutes. If you have uh, some of the friends I do, uh, this could this be gone instantly and that you know you're going to be opening another one. So for 35 bucks, bringing it out with friends, it's not a bad thing. Um, when I bring out the $80 and the $100 bottles, you know, I like to bring those out at certain times, uh, especially before a lot of, let's say, drinking occurs. Um, when, when you have friends over and you're on your fourth and fifth bottle, you might as well just bring out some stuff that, because your, your palate at that point is sort of bland. Um, but when you first get there and you want to have a nice couple, the first couple bottles with some friends that, and you want to really share some nice experiences, yeah, bring up some expensive ones. But do not be fooled with expensive wines, right? A $20 bottle could be just as good as a $100 bottle. There's reasons why there's, there, there's you know, bottles are expensive. You know, French wines, for instance, coming to the U.S., heavily taxed. Um, and uh, so a yeah, hundred dollar French wine could be more of a forty dollar bottle, really. Um, and uh, um, and then there could be an excess position of uh, a varietal they picked that they made tons more than they expected, so they lowered the price of wines. They're, they're, you know, uh, a wine could be one hundred fifty bucks because they only picked from this, uh, you know, eighteen plants left, and they picked from this, and they had to you know raise the price to go ahead and um, cover some of their costs on this special wine. Um, there's lots of reasons why there's there's a there's price variance so don't be fooled um but you know one thing is open you know take a look and read about it uh, a lot of these wine stores have really good little clips about you know like, hey wine spectator or wine enthusiast they gave it 94 points 96 points and it gives you a little reason why follow those those are really good to know in addition there's lots of other um you know apps Vivino is a great one. Vivino, you take a picture of the wine, it tells you a little bit about it, sort of rates it, you know, um, and it gives, uh, you know, you know, people that are drinking it, they just sort of explain like, hey, I give this four stars out of five, this is why, you know, I can't believe this is a $30 bottle, this is awesome, those kinds of things. So there's lots of tools to understand why you're buying a wine at a certain price, so just remember that. But at the end, the most important thing is, you like it so after you 
look at it and aerate it and smell it and taste it, the last thing is, do you like it? If you don't like it, you don't like it, move on. If you do like it, great. Make a mental note. You can even, you know, take a picture of it, um, you know, load it into something like Vivino or something else. And, and when you go to the store, pick up a bottle. It's great. Uh, but I don't care what anybody says, $20 bottles, $100 bottles, $5 bottles. It's your palate. And your palate at the end will tell you if you like it or not and if you want to you know, purchase a bottle in the near future, right? So uh, more to follow about 10 days from now. I'll do another one. But it's been a pleasure. And have a great weekend. Take care.